Republican Senator John Kennedy of Louisiana, member of the Judiciary Appropriations and Budget Committees, joins us now. Senator, glad to have you on. Thank you for being here today. What concerns do you have about the ability of this man to enter the country as he did? Well, I mean, they caught him. My worry is that they won't catch the next one. Um, I, you don't have to be Einstein's cousin, Sandra, to figure this out. There, there are these tens of thousands of members of these terrorist groups, ISIS, Hezbollah, Hamas, uh, Al-Qaeda, um, many of them throughout the world. You come, they, want, they hate Americans. They want to kill us and drink our blood out of a boot. They hate the Jewish people. They want to kill us. Their religion teaches them to kill us. And you have a, a Biden-Harris administration that has allowed anywhere from 10 to 12 million folks to come into our country illegally. That's like five Nebraskas. Mm -hmm. And the Biden administration and the Harris administration don't have the slightest idea who they are, where they are. Uh, they haven't vetted them. Now, that's a, that, that's a, uh, that's a recipe for disaster. And I, I worry that more of this is is going to happen. And, I mean, that's one of the reasons that, that, that President Biden's, uh, it, he's polling up there right with, right up there with punching kittens, but that doesn't give me any comfort with the politics of this. What I worry about is more terrorist acts like the one that uh, the Justice Department just caught. I, I hope they catch the next one, but the odds are against them. We hear your concerns, sir. Meanwhile, today marks four years since the New York Post published the contents of the now infamous Hunter Biden laptop. The information detailed how Hunter Biden introduced then VP Biden to that top Ukrainian executive and often used his access, Senator, for influence that translated to those big paydays. Many Democrats and legacy media outlets are pushing the same and they pushed the same talking points to discredit that reporting, you'll remember. I think it's broadly known and widely known, Peter, that there was a broad range of Russian disinformation. The origins of this whole uh, smear uh, are from the Kremlin. It's classic uh, textbook uh, Soviet-Russian uh, tradecraft at work. Hunter Biden, this laptop uh, that intelligence mm -hmm. officials have warned are, is likely Russian disinformation. Ongoing Russian disinformation effort. An ongoing Russian disinformation effort. And we know Secretary of State Antony Blinken led the effort to get 51 former intelligence officials to write that letter suggesting the story was Russian disinformation. For years, the legacy media dismissed the reporting and social media platforms censored access to it. Some two years later, some outlets finally admitted they were wrong and the laptop story was true. The FBI even used the laptop to prosecute Hunter's gun charge case. President Biden insisted for years that he was never involved with Hunter's business dealings, despite emails and photos that showed clearly otherwise. I don't know what he was doing. I did not know he was on the board of that company. I've never discussed my business or their business, my sons or daughters. I never discussed a single thing with my son about anything having to do with Ukraine. I've never spoken to my son about his overseas business dealings. I have never discussed with my son or my brother or anyone else anything having to do with their businesses, period. And Senator, you just wrote a new op-ed for FoxNews.com. The headline reads, it's the fourth anniversary of the biggest lie the Biden-Harris administration ever told. It's only gotten worse. What's your message on all of that as we look back and do remember, Senator? The American people figured out long ago that President Biden and Vice President Harris have a very casual relationship with the truth. I mean, they told us they're not trying to take away gas stoves. They're not trying to take away gasoline-powered cars. The border's not open. The president's okay. The biggest lie they told was a Hunter Biden laptop, though. It was uh, unconscionable three weeks before the last election. Uh, they, just, they just looked the American people in the eye and lied. It was led by the Secretary of State, who was a campaign member of the Biden-Harris team there then. 
Uh, that single act, and, and the media, not all, but many members of the media participated. The social media companies uh, participated. I think, I think that single lie uh, did more to undermine the, the, the integrity uh, of the federal government and specifically the office of the president than, than any act I've seen uh, by this administration. It was unconscionable. And the number of, of people who knew better in the CIA and the FBI, led by, by Secretary Blinken, um, it, it, it just shocks the conscience. And, and it really hurts the institution of the presidency. It hurts these social media companies. And it hurts the institution of the media. I mean, what the American people have concluded is that, that many, many members, not all, but many members of the media no longer want to report on the world. Um, they want to report on how to change the world in their opinion. Yeah. And, and that's not what journalism is supposed to be about. I mean, you think back and you look back at those videos and those questions and answers, I mean, years ago, we're going back four years now, but the effects of all of that still very real today, to your point, Senator. Meanwhile, the Wall Street Journal editorial board is arguing there is a sleeper issue in this upcoming election, Senator, the transgender sports controversy. An excerpt reads, what many people resent is having progressive cultural values imposed on them. That includes compelling their daughters to compete against athletes who were born male. This isn't bigotry. For most Americans, it's a matter of fairness. Not long ago, most Democrats believed in that principle. But these days, the hard edge of the transgender movement has dictated that its view of gender must be imposed nationwide. Senate Democrats have towed that line. Dozens of campaign ads have focused various angles of gender issues. Here is a national ad from the Trump campaign. Even the liberal media was shocked Kamala supports taxpayer-funded sex changes for prisoners and illegal aliens. Every transgender inmate would have access. Kamala's for they, them. President Trump is for you. Many down-ballot candidates also highlighting protecting women in sports. That includes Texas Senator Ted Cruz, who is in a tight race with his uh, Democratic challenger, Colin Allred. Colin Allred supports boys playing in girls' sports. He voted against the Protection of Women and Girls in Sports Act, and he voted to allow boys in girls' bathrooms. How big of an issue do you think this could be in the upcoming election, Senator? I think it's a big issue, hmm. way beyond the election. Look, um, this is America. If, if you're 18 years of age or older, as far as I'm concerned, you, you can be whomever you want to be. Uh, your sexuality is your own business unless it involves a child. But if you're a minor, it's different. Parents have a say. And we treat minors differently for a reason. I am not going to vote, Sandra, to require parents to make their 13-year-old daughters in a junior high school locker room look at the penis of a 13-year-old boy. I'm not going to do it. I don't care how the young man identifies. I'm also not going to vote to make women have to uh, compete in sports against biological males, even if they identify as transgender. You can curse God or nature or, or evolution or whatever you believe in, but the truth of the matter is that starting in the womb, women and men have physical and physiological differences that give men an advantage in physical sports and women can get hurt if they compete against men. That's just a natural fact and I think most Americans understand that. It is hard to believe this issue has risen to the level that it has um, that is affecting so many Americans right now. Uh, Senator, we appreciate you joining us today. Thank you, sir. Thank you.